everyone, this is Tilly. I'm really happy to see you again today with a new guide video. In this video, we're gonna talk about some basic and fundamental things that I guess will be helpful for Unstars players to know, especially for producers who just started the game. These are a few points that we'll talk about in this video. Without further ado, let's start. Well, we're only gonna talk briefly about the overall gameplay, cause I believe every one of us is already familiar with it. The main gameplay of Ensemble Stars Music is of course the rhythm game, where we play these so many cool and pretty songs and having fun with the beat maps. While our main purpose in the game is being a producer of this, could be just a few or all 49 lovely idols of our choice. We collect and train their cards, giving them new outfits in the process, and getting the higher score for the rhythm game itself as the result of those trainings. We also help them grow as idols by gathering new fans for them and increasing their idol ranks. Then, as a cute bonus, we also have this tiny little office that we can decorate as we like. Plus, these adorable chibi idols with their cute interactions that we can watch all day. There are two types of outfits in the game. The first one is room outfit. We can see the idols wearing them on our home screen or at the idol room. The second is MV outfit. Quite obvious from its name, it's the outfit we will see when they are performing on lives. Most of the room outfits and MV outfits are obtainable from cards by unlocking their idol roads. They have their own nodes, so we have to unlock them respectively. Which card rarity has room or MV outfits? There are 5 card rarities in Unstars, from 1 star, to 5 star. This set of 49 1 star cards are the an idol card series. We all have them by default when we start the game. The rest of the rarity, 2 to 5 star cards, can be obtained by gacha or we call it scouting. The room outfits can only be found on 3 star cards and above, but there are also some 3 or 4 star cards that don't have unlockable room outfits on them. We can easily check their unlockable contents by looking at the icons here. 5 star cards will always have room outfits, and they are the only rarity that comes with empty outfits. However, there are some exceptions such as unit event cards. All member cards come with room and MV outfits no matter what rarity they are. Tour event cards. On the contrary, tour event cards only have room outfits and no MV outfits even on their 5 stars. Campaign cards. Free 5 star cards that we obtain from campaign might not have any unlockable contents such as room or MV outfits. For example, this 5 star Makoto from Link Click Club campaign doesn't have any unlockable contents in it. And 5 star hero from SRGR missions only has SVP. The initials. Every idol has an initial card. 5 star cards for the leaders and 4 star cards for the members. These initial cards come with their unit uniform and the outfits. Yes, the 4 stars too. Both 5 stars and 4 stars don't include the room outfits though. ES Idol 2 star cards. But what if we haven't obtained their initial cards? especially for the leaders, since it's obviously harder to obtain 5 star cards. These ES Idol 2 star cards are the answers. We can unlock both their unit uniform room outfits and MV outfits from these cards. We can get this card series by scouting on the audition scout. I'm sure it won't take too long for every producer to collect everyone's ES Idol card. Other Outfit Sources Campaign Outfits Sometimes the game also gives us room outfits or MV outfits from campaigns. 
Usually, there are no cards, and we obtain them directly as mission rewards. Prime Mission Outfit Series By doing our daily and prime missions, we're collecting mission coins that can be exchanged with MV Outfits. Without buying the Prime Mission Pass and spending dias, we can get one MV Outfit per season. At the end of the period, the remaining coins won't expired but turn into Mission Coin Past, where we can save them to buy any outfits from the past series. So, don't worry, if you like any other outfits more than the current series, you can save the coins for them or just saving them for future series that you might like more. Lastly, there are also outfits available at the shops. We can find them at the Society Shop, ES Coin Shop, and for paid contents, there are MV outfits available on the outfit shop right here. Two ribbon outfits will gradually be added to this shop too. We can buy them using 3000 paid dias and we'll also get 10 scout tickets from the package. This is a good deal and a nice way to save your paid dias, cause it's definitely cheaper than directly using the paid dias to scout on the banners. The best campaign outfits will also get added here after some time. And good news, there's exchangeable using free dias, so producers who missed campaigns or haven't played that time will have a chance to also own the outfits. SCR Outfits 5 star outfits have this secret color version. We call it SCR for short. Room SCR can be obtained from the third copy of the card, while the MV SCR can be unlocked if we obtain the max copy of the card, which is the fifth copy. So yeah, it's really expensive. SPP Another exciting unlockable content from cards is the special performance or SPP. Successfully hitting the ensemble notes when the sketch bar is full will activate the default solo performance. But when we use the specific card that has solo performance for this song, it will trigger SPP. Only 5 star and 4 star cards come with the SPP that we can unlock via Idle Road. We can check which song SPP the card has by tapping this information here. Here, I'll try to summarize the cards so that by their rarities and what contents can be unlocked from their idle roads. Now, let's talk about one of the essential methods for obtaining cards, which is the scouting. For permanent scouting, we have these two banners or scout boxes. The Advanced Scout has all 3 to 5 star cards that are currently available in the gacha pool. No raid ops here, so all the cards have the same chance of appearing in our pools. We can scout here using Dias or the Dias Scout Ticket or basic Dias Scout Ticket. Sadly, there's no PT system, so there's no guarantee of getting 5-star cards even after a certain amount of pulls. The 5-star rate is 3%, but at the end of the day, it all depends solely on our luck. Next is the Audition Scout. We can only scout here using the SQ Scout ticket. These tickets are easily obtainable from doing lives. If we are an active player, we can scout here every day, but the highest rarity we can pull from this banner is the 4 stars. The good thing is, scouting here will give us many EXP tickets for every max uncapped cards. For time limited scouting, we have two main banners. They are the Featured Scout and the Event or Theme Scout. Both banners change once per two weeks. Featured Scout on Monday and Event Scout on Friday at 12 p.m. server time. 
The scouts will feature one character as the 5 star, one character as the 4 star, and also up to 3 characters as the 3 star cards. This card's drop rate will be boosted during the banner period. After the banner ends, these cards won't be available for a while, but don't worry, because they will get added to the normal gacha pool after 3 months, so there will be a chance to eventually get them even if you miss them on their actual banners. Again, sadly there's no pity system for these banners, but we have these scout coins. We'll get one coin for every pull we do on the banner, and if we collect enough, we can exchange them for the raid up cards. However, these coins have expiration date, so we have time limit to collect and exchange them. Obtaining raid up cards using this method is really expensive and painful though. I really hope your desired cards will come home without having to exchange them from here. What are the differences between Featured Scout and Event Scout? A new Featured Scout starts on Monday every two weeks. Story-wise, it's more personal because in this FS series, the idol being featured as the 5-star card gets their own exclusive outfit that only belongs to them. 5-star, 4-star, and 3-star cards will have their own story chapters and all the story chapters will get added to their respective idol story instead of the scout story. Currently, we are in the first series of Featured Scout. It started way back then with Mika FS and will end on May 2024 with Nagisa as the last idol who gets his exclusive outfit. Then, the second Featured Scout series or FS2 will start with Izumi as the first featured idol. This Featured Scout 2 will have their unbloomed version animated, or in JP version, it is called Emotion. Additionally, the 4-star cards on this series will also come with MV outfit, both normal and SCR version. Event Scout starts on Friday every 2 weeks. It features few idols and they will have similar outfits based on the Scout theme. Only 5 stars will have both room outfit and the MV outfit, while 4 stars will only have room outfit unlockable on their idol routes. 3 star cards might or might not have room outfits. We can always check about that information by clicking the room outfit menu here. Story-wise, the event scout usually has an interesting 6 to 8 chapter story featuring all the characters on the cards. We can find them under the Scout Story section. Both FS and Event Scout stories are free to read during their banner duration, and they will stay open if we read them within this period, so don't miss them. An important thing about the Event Scout is, they are associated with an event that will start a day after their release. Obtaining the Event Scout cards will give a certain percent of bonus points for the associated event. The more bonus card we have, the more bonus we'll get. Original and Limited Scout Beside the regular scouts that we've talked about just now, Ensemble Stars Music also has Limited Scouts. While cards from Featured and Event Scout will join the normal pool 3 months after their release, Cards from Limited, or sometimes we call them Original Scout, won't get added to the normal gacha. But they do have revivals, unless it's stated on the notice that they won't get any reruns, for example, the past collab scouts. The Limited 5-star cards have room outfits, MV outfits, and their SCR versions. The 4-star only has room outfits, but both 5-star and 4-star cards from the original scouts do not have SPP. Another limited scout we have are the 4-star anniversary card scout. Remember this walk with your smile banner? This was the special scout for Unstars JP's 5th anniversary. In this scout series, each idol got their 4-star card with the same theme, which is the corresponding year's anniversary theme. 
We have different timeline with JP version, so the WWYS card we got wasn't associated with anniversary, but we got them as a special campaign instead, alongside the release of the song, Walk With Your Smile. The cards come with room outfits and SPP for the song, while the MV outfits were obtainable from the campaign. Let's take a preview to JP's 6th and 7th anniversary limited scouts. Sooner or later, they will be released on the end, so we might want to get ready. This is the theme for JP's 6th anniversary, and the anniversary song was Visionic Star. And this one is for the 7th anniversary. The song is titled Surprising Thanks, so maybe the scout will come with the same name. For the 8th anniversary, JP didn't release any limited 4 star cards, but we do have this album release commemoration scouts for every unit, which also have their 4 star cards with their album cover illustration. It's nice that these 4 star limited banners give us a guarantee of pulling 2 red up cards in every multi. Could be more though. Just like original scouts, the cards from these banners won't get added to the normal gacha pool. The only way to obtain them is to scout for them when they have revivals later. Revival Scout Hmm, we've mentioned about Revival Scout a few times previously, so what is exactly the Revival Scout? Sometimes, when there are special campaigns like the anniversary, or half anniversary, or seasonal events like Chinese New Year, the past banners will come back and the cards in the scouts will get boosted right again. All past featured scouts and even scouts will get their revival banners for a shorter period of time, usually only 1-3 to three days per round. Limited will get their revivals as well, but it's hard to predict when they will finally have them. Oh, but there's a high chance that the previous year's anniversary scout will have a rerun shortly before the release of present year's anniversary limited cards. Same goes with Chinese New Year's limited scouts. Birthday Scout On Idol's birthday, there will be a one-day birthday banner for the birthday idol, where all their cards get boosted through parade. Likewise, on our birthdays, we'll also get a special one-day banner where we can do a multiple using 3k dias and we're guaranteed at least one 5-star from the scout. You may want to save for this banner if your birthday is near. Another method to obtain pretty cards in Unstars besides coding is participate on events. Events start on Saturday 12 p.m. server time once every two weeks. The event duration is 8 days and 10 hours long, so it will end on Sunday at 10 p.m. There are two types of events in Ensemble Stars Music. The first one is the unit event. This event features one specific unit with a new song being released as the event song. One member, which is the event 5-star card, becomes the center. We grind points by clearing lives and doing idol works, as well as collecting event passes to play the event song to obtain even more points. We can get the 5-star card reward by collecting 3.5 million total points. On unit events, we need to spend a certain amount of dias, depends on our team's power, to reach 3.5 million points and get the 5-star. The second one is the tour event. This event features two units or more in the future tours and has two event 5-star cards. The gameplay is different from unit event because we don't have event song life, therefore no event passes. But we have to go on tours and clear this 30 set list called tour days. Great news, just by clearing day 30 of this tour map, we'll be getting one of the two event 5 stars for free, no day spending needed. But of course, we can get both 5 stars or even more copies by spending dias. The first 5 star card on the reward list can be obtained at 3 million points, generally more affordable than our regular unit event. 
For more detailed explanation and discussion about unit or tour event, you may check out these guide videos if you need them. Shovel event has exactly the same format as unit event, but instead of featuring one of ES existing units, it features four to five idols from different units as they work together in a temporary group on a project called the Shovel Project. What makes it slightly different from the regular unit event is two members will have their five star cards. The rest of the members will be the four stars and there will be no three star cards. The tricky part is not all of them will be on the event reward list. One five star and one four star will be at the event scout. Yes, they will be the bonus cards for the shovel event itself. So, to get the complete members, we will have to both scout and grind on the event. But don't worry too much, cause the event scout cards will surely be back in 3 months, so even if we miss them on their banners, we still have a chance to obtain them one day. Large Scaled Event Large scale event is the combination between unit and tour event. We have tour days, but we also have event songs. The tour days will drop event passes that can be used to play the event song lives, just like how our usual unit event works. On JP version, there are only two large scaled events so far. One of them is the upcoming SS Final Stage Tour that will come to EN on February 2024. On that event, we'll have two tour map routes and also two event songs, Feathers of Arc by Vine and Deep Eclipse by Eden. Mini Events Other than the major events, we also have mini events that happen during the break week after the current event ends and before the new event starts. On Monday noon after an event ends, the game will release a new playable song. This new song release comes alongside the live fest. In live fest, few selected songs will get troop rate boost for certain materials. The selected songs will change daily, but it's easy to find them just by filtering the song list into campaign category. This is the perfect period to farm those materials we need to train our pretty cards. If the last event is a unit event, the event song will also join the list as new song. Don't forget that the new songs will give us nice amount of dice too. Life Challenge A life challenge might be held too during the break week. This is an interesting mini event because this challenge will purely test our rhythm game skills with their difficult bitmaps. We will be given passes to join the challenge and obtain the titles for each progress we manage to achieve. Both Live Fest and Live Challenge start at the same time, which is Monday 12 pm, and end on Saturday 11 59 am. Birthdays isn't it sweet that we get to celebrate our favorite idols' birthdays together? On the special day, we can celebrate their birthdays by farming party poppers, attending their birthday parties, try to get their cards we haven't owned yet from their birthday banners, train their cards for less materials, and gain more fans for them. And lastly, buy the birthday cakes and watch their cute interactions at the office. Campaigns I'm always excited for campaigns because on campaigns we get to do many interesting activities and experience many different gameplays and usually they bring lots of rewards too. Campaigns can be held for various seasonal events like Halloween, Christmas, New Year, Summer, etc. or on special occasions like anniversaries, or to commemorate some milestones, like the 100 songs bingo we are having right now. They happen frequently, so we'll always have something exciting to do in the game. Still, gotta be prepared in case they'll drop new limited cards along with the campaign though. 
Okay, we have pretty much gone through everything that happened in OnStars. Now, let's talk about the routines and schedules. Daily routine Our daily routine on Ensemble Stars Music, besides using up our BPN work tickets, of course, is completing the daily missions. By doing the daily missions, we also gain EXP for the prime missions for even more rewards. Then, don't forget to farm our daily dias by clearing the 3 sets of Stereo Life. We can get 50 to 300 dias, if you're lucky, from our daily Stereo Life. We have to play Stereo Life manually and can auto life unless we use these tickets. We can obtain the tickets as rewards from the prime missions. Also, remember to check in every day and do this society task too. Alright, now here's the weekly routine that we might want to pay attention to. Society Weekly Rewards By doing daily society tasks with all the members, we're accumulating points to claim these nice rewards such as coins, 200 dias, and 1 dias scout ticket. This weekly bonus is reset every Monday. Society Joint Life We also have exciting joint life in our society on Saturday and Sunday. The time might be different for each society since they have option to set a custom time for the society's joint life schedule. Quick info, society coins can be used to exchange items from society shop that reset also every Monday and also to upgrade our talents. Society is open when producer hits player rank 10. Shared Life On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 7 to 12 p.m., we can team up with a friend to clear two lives with specific units, and then we'll get 60 diamonds as well as a bunch of training materials as rewards. Tasks that reset once a month are the Ensemble Life missions. It gives us a total of 150 dias. But no rush since we have a full month to clear them. Also, playing Ensemble Life with friends is actually really fun. Now, let's put all the activities and events we've talked about before into a one overall schedule. Since scouts, events, and mini events change or start once every two weeks, we can say that OnStars has two weeks cycle and the cycle starts on Monday. For example, let's look at this monthly planner template and put all the events into their spots on the planner. Let's say on this Sunday, the previous event has just ended, so there will be a few things that start on Monday. First is the new features code. Let's put it here. The scout will have two weeks duration before it changes into the next one. The new song release and the live pass will also start on this Monday, along with the live challenge if there is any. Next, the event scout or team scout will happen on Friday the same week. The banner also will last for two weeks before the next event scout is released. Then, 24 hours after the event scout begins, which is on Saturday, the live fest and live challenge end, and the unit or tour event will start. The event duration is 8 days and 10 hours. The event ends on Sunday, 10 pm. On Monday, the new cycle begins. Most of the months will only have two new scouts or events, but on rare circumstances, such as last July, we had three FS started in the same month. And on September, we had three event scouts and events started within the same month. But the cycle of course stayed at two weeks long. If you follow Ensemble Stars EN official accounts on Instagram or on X, they will announce upcoming scouts and events two days prior. Well, I guess that pretty much concludes most of the basic and fundamental things about Unstars. Of course, there are still many details and further explanations that didn't get included in this video, but I'll try to put the links to the related guides at the description and also in the pinned comment. I hope those videos could be helpful to you, my precious fellow Unstars players. Well, 
it's time to say goodbye for now. I'm really glad if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.